Let's play what's in box number one. That's it. That thing's tiny. I'm gonna open this box with two hands. Instructions, nobody needs those. Box of random things, what? Test the fuel filter for a diesel truck. Are you joking? Okay, whatever. Um, I really hope they're fittings right there. Thank you. <clears throat> wow, they're sure a little stingy with their line. Alright, well, whatever, let's throw it on. So, uh, this thing requires the stock banjo bolts, which the Dodge has a Raptor pump on it, and one of those has been taken off. It's probably in Everett or wherever that guy lives, or in the trash, or recycled into something else by now. But uh, that's gone, so I actually don't think I'm going to be able to install this thing. I'll do some more poking around and see what I can come up with or whatever, but it's already not looking good and I haven't even started. First thing I'm going to do is take off the old pump because the old one's <clears throat> actually still on the side of the engine. I could probably just figure out how to plug it in and it would run and we wouldn't have needed this. But I don't think either one of us realized it was still just chilling there. Um, anyway, so there's one banjo bolt on there. All the banjos are on the truck, just the bolts aren't. Um, I'm hoping there's another one on the back of the pump where the old fuel line used to go in which is right there on this one this is looks pretty similar to the stock one just upgraded I guess um, anyway so yeah, I'm gonna take off the old one see what I can scavenge off of it and since the old line for the Raptor pump goes into the filter then I should be able to connect that just onto the in on this and not use a banjo bolt because I think there used to be one there and if that's still there on the old one then I can use it where I need on the other side of this but I'm not sure if that's gonna work um, I'll take off the old Raptor pump there's kind of a weird connector there anyway for the two hoses so basically I disconnect the Raptor pump cut the line where one of the connectors is and then just shove the two lines together and bypass where the pump was it actually should work out pretty well probably gonna get soaked in diesel but should work so let's go have fun so as you probably can't see right here was where the fuel filter was, I disconnected that so I could actually get to this old fuel pump and where I need to mount the fast pump. So, got the majority of that. There's a clip still on it for the old fuel line. I hope the fuel line's been disconnected. I'm going to throw it on the ground and see if a bunch of fuel comes out. Because then I'll know. If I can get the fuel line apart. 
That's always the tough one. I can't remember if you push these together or pull them apart. I want to say they go together. And it comes off. This is really like a three-handed job. And there's barely enough room for one hand. This is stupid. And irritating. What's the moral of the story? Buy an electric car. Buy a Leaf. Buy a Tesla. Tesla's supposed to come out with trucks fairly soon. If there's a tool for this, I want one. Because every time I have to do this, it's a giant pain in the ass. Stupid quick clip thing. I'm gonna get some needle nose. But hopefully they drop the tank and actually put it where it belongs. As long as fuel doesn't come out of that one, I'll be happy. And I can see if I can trace it back to anywhere I can disconnect it without dropping the whole tank. Because I don't wanna and we got stuff to do. I gotta go pick up some gas so I can finish the exhaust on the Ford that we're putting, well, a 12 valve and then one of these in. You guys are killing me. Figure out what you wanna goddamn do and do it one time. I'm really tired of doing everything three freaking times. Just do it once. That's all I want. Is that really the old fuel pump? Man, this thing looks ancient. Oh, yay, that's how that works. Awesome. That was sarcasm, by the way. There we go. Gimme. Look at that. Is that really the fuel pump that comes on these? Wow. All right, whatever. So yeah, the fast pump is definitely probably twice as awesome as that. This thing is just ugly. Ugly fuel pump. Okay, so now I'm gonna throw the filter. I checked the filter, that's why that big huge ratchet's chilling there. I mean, it's dirty, but it's not the end of the world dirty. Would probably be good to replace it. Or replace yesterday, you know, either way. So I'm throwing this into place just so I can pop that line off the back. And hopefully that'll thread into the back of the fast pump and if it does then we should be on track to actually get this thing to work if it doesn't well I'm gonna have to go find a banjo bolt somewhere I don't know I guess they're metric I don't know These engines are weird most of the stuff on that 12 valve is actually metric the bolts are all metric I thought it'd all be standard kind of weird 
My cousin says the stuff on my NHC 250 is all metric too. I used standard wrenches when I was taking it all apart and it fit beautifully. But I have standard or metric wrenches too, obviously. So I'll try those next time and see how that goes. Don't know. It's coming inside before it gets drowned. Right there in the corner. It's time out for you. find it weird that on the high pressure side of these things they still keep these little rubber hoses with just little clip retainers like I mean it's only what like 27 pounds at the most but still like I don't know it just weirds me out So this has, this side's kind of beveled a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, not beveled. Um, I know it is beveled, not chamfered, never mind. <laughs> and this side, it's just kind of squared. I don't know which is which. So I'm doing the beveled side, like the squared side down towards that, so it seals on that better, and then the beveled side towards this, so it seals this better, in theory. Is that how it goes? Who knows? Bam. on there also in a way that makes sense so you can actually reach it later um, these I guess are the new bolts button head screw I guess that's this okay this screw will act as a guide pin only for the factory inlet support bracket well I'm pretty sure that's not on the truck anymore This goes underneath the bracket that's there. And these bolted on. Pretty sure that's it. But why not throw this on there and see what happens? Alright, I'm gonna read through, through the instructions again, see if there's anything I missed, and I'll see you back out there. Okay, well apparently this one's only 16 to 18 PSI, whereas right now we were running between 23 and 27. So we'll see how that goes. So, as you might be able to see, oh wow, that's kind of... Ah, I gotta move that. That's lame. 
anyway, um, way down inside there, right where you can't see, is where the fuel pump is. Come on. Not going to do it for me, are you? Well, that blurry spot down there with the blue thing next to it. And the hose is actually super kinked the way the instructions have you route it. And I really don't want to address that problem because that totally sucks, but I'm going to have to. Um, I'm going to see if I can loosen that top one and get it to kind of bow out this way so I don't have to try to squeeze in the bottom one. Then there's this stuff going on here, all this aftermarket relay junk. Pretty sure that's the line that goes back to the Raptor pump. This is the line that came from the stock thing. And this is the line that goes to the battery. So all that's leaving. Bye. These terminals look a little bit better now that they're each missing a wire. It's gone from back there, which is also good. The little relay's gone, so the ground's now more at home. All this crap's off there, look at this. That's all for the relay and for the line. There's where it connected to the stock line. Where's the engine side? Or not the engine, the pump. Pretty sure that was the pump side. And uh, the other bit on the pump itself. Oh, I can't move that too much or else fuel's gonna come out. Part of the clip, I can't remember which bit. Part of this clip was broken. That's why there's a bunch of tape on it. Um, after one of the first few times I got stranded, I figured out that that was one of the issues. This plug just kept coming apart on its own, so I taped the absolute bejesus out of it so that would never happen again. Not the greatest fix in the world, but it worked until I started having other problems. There's the Raptor pump. All it says is turn the ignition on, let the pump run for 15 seconds, but uh, the AC was on so I couldn't hear if the pump was on or not. Uh, I'm going to turn the ignition on again, let it sit there for 15 seconds, and then start it up. That's what it says. We'll see. There you go, bros. Another day at Cougar House Garage, ending in the studio. I was gone most that day. It was raining. Brandon was pretty much out of the rain because the Dodge hood is so big. He was just pretty much under it the whole time. He was a pretty good sport about getting that fast direct replacement pump put on there. Hell of a lot better than on the Raptor pump, I feel. I think there's way too much that's way too complicated for a pump that isn't a pump and filter unit. It's just a pump. And plus, AirDog wouldn't replace it for me. I called them and asked them. They said, no, you, you didn't uh, buy it from us for your truck. You bought the truck and it came on it. I thought it was bullshit because, you know, you should back your product up. If your product's good and has, you know, the big long warranty those has, they should just back it up and replace it no matter who buys the truck. I think, you know, that's kind of irrelevant. So, AirDog lost my money. So, now I'm, uh, I'm going to use Fast products. Fast. So... That pump went right on there, easy replacement. I can't believe the previous owner actually left the factory electric pump on the motor. Like, that's ridiculous, how lazy. He upgraded the fuel injectors to plus 100 horsepower in injectors, but was too lazy to take the electric pump off the motor. Like, come on, man, that's outrageous. So Brandon got that done. That'll be a good upgrade until we do power upgrades or 
upgrade the turbo, then I'll get a filter housing system from Fast. But right now, you know, that's a $600 unit. You know, this was just a $250 unit to replace the uh, Raptor pump that went to that went out on us. But I'm hoping we might get a little bit better fuel economy. Probably not. Who knows? But you know, now that that's done, you know, the uh, I ordered up some wheels and tires for it too. We got some 20 by 12 fuels coming for it, fuel wheels on some 37s. They're, it's like an off-brand, like Kano, Keg, Trail, MT, something like that. Don't quote me. They're they're an off-brand, cheap brand, but we got the wheels we want, and the tires that are on the Dodge are pretty bald, so they're bald Toyo MT 30, uh, 315 75 R16s. You know, pretty good for 2001, but, you know, it's 2017. We need to upgrade the look on this truck, so... Now that we'll do that, get some cool wheels and tires on it. I ordered up some leather upholstery, leather like seat kit to go on the front leather seats so we can start converting the, imper the interior from tan to black. So we got that from JS Interiors. So we'll get we'll box open those in, in a couple days and actually start installing those on, on the truck. As you can see in this video, you can see the little cushion on the driver's seat because you know it's from 2001. It's worn out. Me and Brandon, it hurts our butt. Come on, it's like there's like this metal thing that comes up through. It's terrible. So I got a new cushion come coming as well, so we can get that all put together on the truck, and then we're gonna actually build like. A sled deck I guess you'd call it but we're gonna make it so it's big enough for my Can-Am to go on so that'll be pretty fun that way we'll you know have that truck to use to uh, move the Can-Am around go to fun events with that go do you know trail riding hit up some dunes stuff like that so that'll be pretty cool so that's kind of the plans on the, the Dodge and in the next coming the videos and stuff so but yeah now that we got 19 pounds of fuel pressure we're good now I think we're pretty reliable now we get some good wheels and tires on it I've got to do it do an adjustment on the steering box tighten it up a little bit it's a brand new steering box so it just has, has, just has to be be adjusted a little so well hey thanks for watching guys thanks for being here thanks for your constant support as usual like and subscribe to the new people smash that like button and if you want to see more of Cougar House Garage check us out at cougarhousegarage.com Check us out at Facebook, forward slash Cougar House Garage. And we are Cougar House Garage on Instagram. Follow us. We'll see you guys in the next video.